Ready. Um, you know, five Liberty starters in double figures tonight. What what was challenging for you guys defensively? They're good players. I mean, they're really good players. Um, we're giving up size at different spots. Thought really a couple of runs of theirs you know, swung the game where they scored a couple buckets and then we lost them in transition. And those are the ones you can't give up against them. But um, obviously everybody knows they're a good offensive team. You know, that's probably one of JJ's better games this year. And, you know, she, clearly physically she looks better. Um, no, we got to defend them better. I thought we did at spurts, but we didn't sustain it for 40 minutes. Feels like the defense has been a little bit up and down by the numbers, you know, the past couple of weeks since Kara got hurt. Um, how much of that is just you know, missing really good players on your end and how much of that is, you know, whatever other factors you might be into it. A number of things. I mean, like I've said a few times, I feel like I've talked about the injuries every day, like can't replace those people, um, but we can still be better than we are defensively right now. And um, I think what bothers me most is when it snowballs from one or two possessions to four or five possessions. And how do you kind of, I mean, you, you guys have still a pretty veteran group. How do you kind of cut that off? We keep working at it. I mean, there's no magic solution. Um, each each person can be better and better connected to their teammates. And we're gonna have to do it as a group. You know, we've said to our team without all that shot blocking back there that we gotta be better at the point of attack and not let the ball get in the paint so easily. So can't give up 46 in the paint. And then just want to ask about Tori. You know, we've talked about her a couple of times lately. Um, but what's the biggest difference you see in her other than just shots going down? Um, you know, offensively for her. Uh, as of late shots going down for her is a byproduct of her um aggressive mentality and i think it's it's all connected in her game her defense um her defense leading to some offense uh, being shot ready so people have to close out hard so she can drive at them but you know i think what we want to see from her is a level of consistency i want her to come out and be good on sunday and last one for me, you know, Sabrina for them, uh, almost a triple double, just an assist shy. What was, you know, what was she doing, whether it was, you know, decision making or shot making? Like, what did you see from her that was having her be effective within their offense? You know, she looked like she played her normal game for the most part. You know, I thought we did a, after the first quarter, we did a good job closing our airspace, but um, no, good players find other ways to impact games. Well, I was curious defensively if you could tell me a little bit about what you feel like the biggest difference was between you know your first half defense and second half defense. Um, probably our ball pressure and the intensity we sustained. Um, I know that the numbers, this, their total score, are probably not that much different between the two halves, but I thought when we went with the small lineup that those guys really committed to pressuring the ball, talking to each other, being physical when they had to be, and you know, there's no reason we shouldn't play like that all the time, regardless of what lineup we have. Right. You mentioned sustaining it for 40 minutes and having that wanting that to be the goal. Um, I'm curious, how much has it been a point of emphasis for you in practice before games, after games, you know, talking to the players about, you know, the final 10 minute stretches of the game? Mm, if anything, for a while, we were talking about our third quarters because we were we were bad in the third quarter. So, um, I don't know about final 10 minute stretch because I, I don't think it's just that segment we might play well for five six minutes and then just have a two or three minute lapse and I think probably every coach in the league is trying to get their team not to do that I noticed a few times uh, Slim in particular it didn't allow frustration to seep in um, I'm curious with this team talk a little bit about their their mental resolve when things get better. it's building it's getting better um, it's been a, a point of focus to the group you know coaches to players but players with each other of when we have a breakdown and we have a bad stretch that we got to bounce out of it faster. And um, a lot of times that comes from teammate to teammate, helping your teammate move on to the next thing. Any other in-person questions? I think that's it then coach. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Tori. What's going on? Sorry. It's my no, first you're good. What's the biggest thing that jumps out as you look at that? Um, well, I was looking at our third quarter. It wasn't as bad as it felt it was just like Stewie <laughs> maybe like all of those points were from Stewie um but I was looking for transition points um see you guys got 24 points off their turnovers yeah um but it I but it felt like it was they were put on a transition clinic out there that's what it felt like <laughs> um but yeah um I feel like that was the biggest thing that jumps out at me immediately before I go watch it is the transition um uh I guess our lack of communication in transition uh but I mean we fought we fought, 
but you know they came up and that's a great team over there that's a great that's a championship caliber team you talk about ch- teams that people think are going to win champion that's who they talk about and we fought um I thought we started showed a lot of growth but there's definitely some room for improvement for sure when you mentioned that communication in transition mm-hmm. um feels like you guys do communicate pretty well in the half court mm-hmm. um so what do you think kind of breaks down in transition yeah uh, I would think it would be like the cross matches um I know we like sometimes we're sending two guards back and sometimes a post player may have to stop the ball obviously something that they're not used to or we're stuck on a JJ and we're trying to get out but no one's getting us out and you know Benajelani sliding up and we have to stop Sabrina down so you know those are like this is not a good team to not be communicating <laughs> with uh so you know and they expose us I mean like I said they're a great team but that's definitely an area we got to get better at just like looking at the numbers it it looks like you guys have kind of struggled uh defensively Mm -hmm. you know kind of since Kira went down Mm -hmm. do you think a lot of that is transition do you think some of it's half court as well Mm -hmm. what do you think the issues have been compared to your you know really good first half of the season yeah um I think it's a combination of all those things um you know we obviously we got some new faces out there too so you know getting in getting them in there and them understanding the coverages and different calls, things that they might not be used to. And then, um, you know, us, like we get, sometimes we can get quiet, especially with our numbers being down. We might be a little tired. Fatigue might play in down the line. Um, but, you know, it's a combination of all those things. Of course, like Kira is one of the best defenders in the league. So when she is out, you know, our those numbers are going to slip naturally, but it's not an excuse. Like it's next woman up. That's why we work hard and that's why we're here. Yeah. And then, you know, offensively, you know, four players and double figures, including you. Yeah. Um, you know, what was what was working well for you guys offensively mm-hmm. once you kind of settled in? Yeah, just being aggressive. Um, we knew that we um trying to get into the paint and whether that's a layup or a kick out, um, we knew that was we were gonna be successful with that. Um and I thought uh we were very aggressive. Um, but down the stretch we gotta get stops. Spot getting stops for sure, especially against a team like that. Last thing for me, uh you know, what do you make a Slim's uh, 29.10 rebound double-double? What, what was the most impressive thing you saw at her? I mean, she's kind of spoiling us now because it's so it's it's becoming so consistent, you know. Um, But I feel like that's the most surprising. Not surprising, but, I mean, you kind of forget, like, because she just does it so often. And it's just like, oh, Slim got another 29 points. Wow. And then it's like, you know, the 10 re- – she's always flying. All the- She's just such so versatile. And she just brings so much to our team on both sides of the ball. Um, it's a blessing to have her because, you know, I know she covers me up a lot. Those massive blogs, you guys enjoy them, but not me because I know that I'm getting blown by. <laughs> She's <laughs> it's just a constant reminder that I'm getting blown by. So, <laughs> but yeah, she helps me um, on the help side uh, tremendously. But yeah, monster game by her for sure. You had two blocks. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> You, you mentioned New York being a championship caliber team. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what you see out of this roster, even when it's shorthanded, mm-hmm. what you see out of this roster that, that gives you optimism that you guys can get that point here. Yeah, fight. Fight, not just from um, the five or the starting five that started the season, but the fight that, you know, that are starting the season, like starting the games now. Um, it goes all the way down the bench, and we know that it's going to take all of us. Um, it's going to take, you know, like I said, all of us, and regardless if you're here for a hardship, here for a seven day, um, you know, it's just kind of like stretching that energy out throughout the roster and showing that, you know, this is regardless of what is happening as far as injuries, we can't feel bad for ourselves because we still have enough to to compete and win. Right. And you kind of casually mentioned fatigue earlier. I'm curious how mm-hmm. much you're able, you know, feeling that at the uh-huh. time of um, feeling it a little bit, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's all, I mean, we're professionals at the end of the day, but so it's, it's all about, you know, taking care of our bodies and understanding that we're not the only ones going through this. Everyone's schedule is hard. West coast trips, one days in between games. Like, so like, we can't feel sorry for ourselves, regardless of injuries, regardless of quick turnarounds. It's just about, you know, being professional, taking care of your bodies and being ready for the next game. Right. And I noticed there were quite a few times tonight where, whether it was you or another player, you know, frustration would almost seep in but mm-hmm. you guys would do a really good job mm-hmm. gathering yourselves is that something you guys talk about being a point of emphasis keeping that mental as well yeah that's actually we um we talk about it a lot um you know because sometimes like we can have things carry over and you know our numbers aren't that long so we can't have you know people spiraling but I thought we did a great job of when I, you know, it looked like I was being very emotional people would come and talk to me and remind me that you know we can't do this right now um, you can show emotion, but you know, you got about two seconds or two steps, get it out next play. So it doesn't carry over. Um, so I'm thankful for my teammates for that, for sure.
just any final thoughts of, about you know what in particular New York did to give you guys trouble tonight? Um, transition. <laughs> they did. They put on a transition clinic. It felt like. Um, but you know, like if we made a mistake, they capitalized on it. It felt. And that's what championship teams do. And, you know, we're going to get back in the lab and we're going to be better. Um, and, you know, we'll be better on Sunday. That's all the time we have. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, Kara. Uh, last game before the All-Star break, you and Tosh rested up the defense. And I think you guys said it was like C plus or something. Mm -hmm. along those lines. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what did you see from the defense tonight? And, and you know, do you feel like you've gotten better since the All-Star break? Mm -hmm. Or did you just slip? Where is the defense right now? It was a better effort, for sure. I think we came out more intentional about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to dictate uh, defense. And I think we we had gave the effort for that. Of course, we had some slip-ups. We had some miscoverages at some point. But I think the effort to get back, those those mess-ups were there as well. So we're showing improvement, and I'm proud of us. Yeah. What is the, like, what's the next step you want to see for you guys to, other than, you know, getting people healthy, what's like the next step you want to take defensively? I think just figuring out with who we have, what we can do, and like maximizing that, that potential on offense and defense, because we're all we have right now. So we just got to go with what we got, you know? Yeah. yeah. Is that something you figure out in games and practices or both? Like, I mean, it's both, like, you know, it's, it's life. <laughs> so uh what happens happens and then we have to figure out how to respond Tori was just saying that uh she feels like like you're spoiling them a little bit offensively because you've been so consistently good uh on the offensive end with your scoring <laughs> um, I'm spoiling. Just keep putting up big numbers yeah. um, you know what were what what gaps were you seeing what what was working for you tonight obviously you know you shot well from three but what were you seeing out there um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think it was, it was anything uh, basketball related. I think uh, I was putting too much pressure on myself to go out and do things. And, you know, with the help of my therapist, with the help of just praying, <laughs> the help of just breathing, you know, I was able to just have a sound mind and just realize that you just gotta have fun. Like, we already got enough shit that we're going through. Like, I don't want to add my own to it. So I was just trying to have a sound mind and come out and just be aggressive and be confident in everything that I did. Like, don't second guess it, whether it's right or wrong. Just go for it. Last thing for me, just wanted to ask you about Tori. You know, I think two of her past three games, she's had like 15, 16 points, shooting well up in the field. What are you seeing out of her um, as of late that's helped you guys offensively? Say that again. I'm sorry. Tori, just her last couple of games seems to be yeah. finding her, yeah. her stroke offensively. Like, yeah. What are you seeing out of her? Um, I mean, you know, three two is when when she when she makes that decision to put the pedal to the metal, man, it's a sight to see. And not to say that she doesn't all the time, but when she when you when you know when Tori's filling in and she's shooting in and she's coming off pick and rolls and she's hezzy into the middle, you know that we we got something going on good with her. And um it's a sight to see. Her arms are long as ever. Like she gets so many tips and deflections and she got one still in the game and I'm like, oh <laughs> you know, like it's it's just so swift and that's just a compliment to our to our defense and offensive side of things, just the guards that we have, all long, lanky, and, and aggressive. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, breathing. You mentioned resolve. Yes. Um, I noticed at one point in the fourth quarter, I hate to bring up the moment, but when Stewie had the and one, it looked like you were about to slam the ball, and then you, you know, collected yourself. Um, I'm curious, a, what you were thinking in that moment, and yeah. b. Just tell us how central that mental resolve is to your individual game. Well, you know, it's 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 a domino effect sometimes. And in that moment, if I feel if I were to show that frustration, it would be translated into the wrong, like lack of a better term pathway you know like flow it would it, it would I feel like it would deter from the from the flow of the game. Like yes, we got a foul call, but I'm personally working on how to control how I feel about reps calls. That's it. So <laughs> I just wanted to slam the ball and I just put it down because at the end of the day, it's like good call, bad call. Like it was a call. And now we got, I have to make sure that I'm ready to huddle the team and make sure we talk about what's happening next. Cause we can't, we can't stay in the last play, but it would have been nice, but I can't. It is part of your growth as a player that again that that good flow that mental flow and do you feel like that helps your teammates when you're in that kind of sense oh by all means yeah I mean if 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 we're being 
vulnerable and transparent right now. That's that's something that I am definitely working on this season is my response to things. So um, I just make a, a constant effort to just be sound in everything I do. Like if it's if it's a bad call, if it's a bad play, if it's a turnover, um, I have to get over it quicker and turn it into a positive quicker. And I think I'm learning how to do that a little bit more. I might smirk, I might laugh, but you know, it's it's all coming game after game after game. And I try to apply it in real life, like, you know, when you're driving and stuff, just to stay calm and not have road rage because people from New Jersey have the best road rage. <laughs> um, and I, I also wanted to ask just, you know, New York today, what about their offense game you guys talked Um hmm. Trouble is such a strong word. Uh, I mean, I'll say this about New York's offense. They have pieces that um, if you are not sound and you are not dictating defenses, they'll have you spread out. They'll have you all over. They'll start picking you apart. They have great guards. They have great post players. And they have a chemistry that has, you know, formed since they got together. So it's only going to get better. Same with us. You know, and uh, kudos to them. They knocked down more shots. They took advantage of our 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 miss our mishaps, and you know they ultimately got the win. But they know, like we know, that this we'll probably see them down the road. We got to handle Phoenix on Sunday, and then go on the road. But it's all a learning curve. It's all a learning curve. We can lose these two, and then go on a five six game win streak. You never know. You know, so you just got to come ready. Just just for you, you know, with, with the injuries that you guys have had and you being a starter throughout all of this and of it, do you feel like you have had to lead um, any differently without people like A and Elena, like, playing? No. No. Um, I think I've, my, my role kind of goes across the board of just being a leader and just being there every day, whatever my team needs. So it's not really a, uh, like, oh, I got to do more. Like obviously, yes, I have to do more, but it you know it's it's not hard because everybody's taking a piece of that load. It's not like, oh, I have a load. TT has Delhi's load. Like everybody has everybody's load. Like we all have each other's back. So it could be anybody, you know, in the night to to have a great game, or it could be two people, three people, but we all know that we have to carry that load together. Anything on the any other in person questions? I think that's all the time we have then. Thanks. All right, guys.